I just want the square wave. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah. it to have that. Uh, I don't uh, want the yeah. kind of harsh amp. Wah, 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 you know. Hello. Hey, man. Really nice to see you. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it has been. Well, I'll tell you what it's been, how long it's been. Fucking year. Whenever that last gig was. March the 5th was the last time yeah. I saw you. Um, yeah, well, there you go. There you go. A year, pretty much. Almost a year to the day, isn't it? So, um, yeah, yeah. That was weird, wasn't it? That was weird. Do, do you know, just sorry, I just I just thought I should. Ha do, do you know how they all, they always have the the big mixing desk behind them? You've got the green screen. You could you could um you could put in the big mixing desk. They're always <laughs> sat in front of the fucking mixer. I'd love to. I'd love if ever I get to be a talking head on something. And given given the way this thing seems to be working out, more than likely it'll be talking about you know a cardiac or something. Mm. Um. I, I might do it in front of just one of those shits. Do you remember those old Z what the the tape players you'd have for your ZX Spectrum, like just the rectangular one with the buttons on the top, you know, that flip up. Just that and a Dodd phaser or something and like a really crap mic and just be sat in front really honestly. Well yeah, well now when I went, well, when I first met Tim, then <laughs> it's, it's always uh, a way to do it. I must do I've watched quite a few of those documentaries while I've been uh well, it's been a bit the empty times, um, and yeah, it's, it is a yeah. bit of um, they're all the same. They're sort of the same dudes in the same same. I, I can't watch enough of them. I know, I know, but I love it. I love the story. So I'm same. I'm same with rock uh, biographies. I, I, mm. I'll, you know, they're not all great, but they're, but when they're brilliant, I mean, I, I love them because it's always the same story. You know, they always <laughs> either die of drugs or find or find religion. You know, that's the, there's it's one of the two. You know, I read the. Um, uh, XTC one the other day. Oh, which one? Uh, Chalk Hills, that one. Chalk Hills, oh, yeah, the first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's not a... I mean, that's kind of almost quite a sad story, really, as well, because they never really sort of achieved the potential they had, did they? Well, yeah, but musically they did. Oh, though. musically, it's I fantastic, mean, yeah. I mean, I, I just sort of... Think, yeah, it is a sort of... I don't know, it is a sad story, but then... It's, it's also not a sad story. I mean, I don't know what it was like to be in that band. I mean, my, my frustration would probably be not playing live, but, mm. I mean, they made so many oh, amazing yeah, I mean, records and really good sounding records too. Output um, was incredible. So I kind of think, well, nobody gets to, you know, nobody, well, uh, not nobody, very, very few people get to make albums as, as consistently good as mm. XDC did. And be loved for it, be absolutely loved for it. So, yeah, I think, you know, Given that I've been part of Cardiacs, and that was just, uh, and it's weird to talk mm. about in the past tense, but that was that was just the ride of my life. You know, it was just mm. terrific fun. And I think, well, what did it matter that? What did it matter? That it wasn't huge, you know. It well, was yeah, huge enough. Uh, I mean, it was a massive. It, it, like, it, I mean, the music we were playing. Ultimately, if you make music that leaves a legacy, I suppose that's you've won then, haven't you? That's the point where the you know it has an impact on people, and, and I think if yeah, you get yeah. good stuff. Yeah, it doesn't go away, does it? People continue to find it, don't they? I mean, yeah, well, that's it. I mean, it's it's not my legacy because you know I didn't write the stuff, but mm. I'll, I'll I'll those are the those are the letters after my name. I'll always be really happy with you know when I see when I see my name, whenever I see it, Carver, sorry, brackets cardiac. I just feel so that's proud. Cool. You know, it's like, <laughs> that would do. That's, yeah, that's, you know, that's, you know, that, you know. <laughs> No, I mean that's that's that is a very 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 good one, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I I get to see my favourite band after my name. You know, so that's that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that, what's your favourite XTC album then, Carvers? Well, all of them for different reasons. Um, but the one I the one I the one that sort of had the most impact on me, I think, in terms of. Uh, was the, my way in was was Black Sea, mm. and Black Sea had um, I can I can if we I can talk a bit about it. I mean, it had it had so many sort of I don't know, just just little breaks of understanding about music through that record. Um, and I, I remember hearing um, Sergeant Rock at the time and really really liking it when I was a kid. So I was about what year was that? Was it, uh, it was Black Sea nineteen eighty uh, or nineteen eighty one? I can't remember, but uh, early eighty eighty. Yeah, 
I, I think it might have been eight years old when I first came on online with music. Around, around the year, around that I time, yeah. Sergeant Rock and, and loving it, and and not, but it wasn't until I got into them, and I got into them. I'd come up, uh, I'd come uh, up to London with some bunch of Plymouth mates to see Cardiacs in the early nineties, and then the following day they were playing uh, the last. Do you know that album by the way, Black Sea? Yeah, I've, it's. I've kind of worked. I got really into Skylarking. And I'm worked oh, forwards. Yeah, yeah, of course. yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, and I work forwards. I'm now I'm just going backwards again. So, well, F F Black Sea had the final track on there. It's called "Travels and Nihilon," and it's kind of um, sort of proto Sonic Youth sort of vibe. I mean, I think it's like if if you know if this album is their Revolver, then this this mm. is XDC's "Tomorrow Never Knows," and it's probably my favorite xdc song it's it's kind of not like or not necessarily like all the others it just has this pounding and then this really like funny melody which keeps landing on this really strange vibey mm. rub kind of slightly atonal just right up my street mm. and it just stays 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 it doesn't really change key and it goes on for like six or seven minutes and I just couldn't believe it. And then people said, well, this is XDC. So I went out and bought this album. And of course, when I heard Sergeant Rock again, I couldn't believe like these really beef hearty, sort of really thick, mm. funny sounding chords. Like, eh, 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 eh. Mm. I was like, God, I don't, I don't remember it being like this. Mm. And then there's another one. There's a, there's a track on it called um, Rocket from a Bottle. And in the middle of this song, I remember buying this uh, album. For, I was in a, be a bed set at the time and buying this album in Plymouth from a shop called Lollipop and second hand and taking it home. And there's a song called Rocket from a Bottle. And the middle bit, there's this like gu guitar solo that, where Dave Gregory is sort of climbing up in fifth. Mm. And it was just like something supernatural. Like the room went a funny colour. I was mm. all weak at the knees. It was just like what happened just then i had to keep listening to it and then, then i had to, very rarely that i'd work something out i had to sort of work out this guitar solo and then ever since then pretty much um anything that you would have heard of mine whether it would be like with guapo or mm. knife world or monsoons or anything has all or my solo stuff i, I always have this i'm always really in this like fifth dawn on it it mm. all came from this solo in rocket from the bottle it was a real like Oh right! I mean, and all it's like it's a violin tuning sort of thing, but I, mm. it was just a way of thinking about, and the way it sort of, it almost has the effect of kind of walking over whatever key, whatever key you're in, it sort of strides over it. <laughs> and so I really, really like this, 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 this kind of fifth thing, which which I got from Black Sea. So I mean, Black, Black Sea had a real, real impact on me, and it's kind of, it's, I think it's really psychedelic. But before they've gone, there's a track, well, two. There's one, No Language in Our Lungs, and of course. The Tomorrow Never Knows He One, Travels in Eholon, just really psychedelic. But um, before they become sort of like this kind of pastoral, looking backwards version of psychedelia, you know, mm. that they were with like later on with Skylarking, which I also really love. But it's amazing. It, yeah. It's kind of a pretty unique sounding record um, and lots of really exciting chords on it. This so is yeah, it. I mean, see my favorite. This has been my. Um... So when I was during um, lockdown, XTC was my sort of discovery. Because I remember you talking to me about them years and years ago. And yeah, sort of yeah. raving about XTC. And I, I never really sort of got, got it. I only ever sort of really heard the singles. And I thought, well, yeah, it's all right. But but bloody yeah, the catalogue's incredible, isn't it? Oh, I mean, there was, I mean every, like I said, I love it right from the beginning. I love the first album. You mm. know, the really, like the post, but the, the kind of, uh, the kind of really wiry, kind of like angular you know, scratchy, kind of really uptight, mm. anxious, sort of like, I, I love it. It's just brilliant. I mean, mm. to, to begin with, that was my really favourite stuff. And the stuff which was current, when I was getting into XDC, the, properly, the current album was Nonsuch. Mm. And it it's took me a while record. with that record because I was much, much more into that kind of like the confrontational mm. stuff. But, um, but yeah, I love it all. But the, the other thing is, there was, I remember seeing... Um, there was a uh, well, around the time Nonsuch came out. They, there was like a late show, and next mm. to the, you know, they never play live. They were on the late show, sort of thing. Um, and they were doing, uh, they were books doing are uh, books are burning. Yeah, and yeah, I've seen that. Just, 
Yeah, really. I never, re- I never really realised at that time. Now it's so, but I mean, he's one of my. He's as a lead guitar player. Partridge. I mean, they both are, but mm. Partridge is absolutely one of my one of my favourites. And I do love. I know it's kind of corny, but I love that guitar duel at the end of the at the end of Books of Burning. I could live Ooh, in that brilliant. little guitar duel that they do as it fades out. You know, it's or, clever. It's not duel. Yeah, it's, it's really, lovely. really cool. So nice. Really, I mean, I look, I look, none of such an album I've spent a lot of time with. That's really good. Um, well, did you know the one for me on that is that wave? Mm. That's for it's just one of one of the it's been top five XDC songs for me. That one just really, the, really beautiful. The sheer volume of it. On that album as well, Dave Mattox, really good, really good drummer. How, how they just the, uh, what I couldn't believe was the more I dug, the more I found, the more I thought, bloody, yeah, that yeah. was really clever, really like. How was this not massive? How was this not? Oh yeah, I know, I know. But, well, that's you know, the I story mean, of all the bands. We why, why is why is anything that why is anything we like not massive? And and <laughs> you know why is what's massive? I mean, it's, there's only stuff you like and stuff you don't like. And I guess you know, I I know. Do, do you know? Um, I, I don't know. I know a few, but I don't know too many girls who like XDC. It's a, it's a. I don't know why yeah. it should be, but it's a guys' band because you know something like Cardiacs isn't. Cardiacs is. is you know, but for some reason, there are certain bands, and XDC seems to be one of them. Yeah, I know. Uh, you mean. It's, it's a weird. Um, it's it's it's. Uh, I suppose it's. Are, it's of course, there are women who like XDC, but uh, it's kind of this slightly muso thing, I suppose, with it. But it's just that it's that constant. Maybe uh, I think it's more that I love that. Sorry, carry on. Isn't it? No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a funny one, isn't it? That I don't. Know if, but I don't really see it as. It's just loads of ideas, and there's that through yeah. composition thing that um, you know when the melodies uh, are, they're going somewhere. It's all going somewhere. Yeah, yeah. All, I know you know what I mean. There's like a lot of time when people put a clever bit in. It's like they've put a clever bit in. Whereas you listen to XTC, and it seems to be that the clever bit was part of the thing all along. But you, you've just yeah, exposed you know, it. Like yeah, it, yeah. You, just, know, you know what I mean? Really good songwriting. I mean, the other thing is just uh, one time. Um, is put on an XCC album and just list, switch off the switch off the um, the the top line and the guitar and just listen to what the bass is doing, mm. and it's a whole new record. It's like you know when you listen to like the, what Colin Mould is, it, it's just like listening to a new record. It's mm. a whole other adventure again. It's really really exciting. L- loads of inversions. You don't hear those sort of level of inversions in rock music very often. Right, do you? Okay. So many thirds in the route, and you know the the Beach Boys it's tricks. Little, it's just a little story going on. It's just mm. a, a beautiful player, that guy. I think. So, what's your yeah, what so are that, you up to? Yeah, that's what are you up to at the moment, um, knife world wise? Is that happening? New stuff. Uh, well, well, yeah, no, I mean, well, obviously we can't we can't all get together in a room. Mm, of Life World is the is the thing I'm really really looking forward to. Um, I won't say cool. reviving because that makes it sound like it was. It was we ever stopped it just you know circumstances course, made it very yeah, very yeah. difficult but i mean um the, the i mean the hard thing with knife world is there's eight of us and that that and so it's it's always a and, and it's hard to on the one hand it's hard to get you know people's calendars to coordinate it's eight people but the, the other thing is and it's it's a real bore to talk about it this way is, is this the, the the economics of knife world it mm-hmm. make it really really difficult and um you know from the moment we do anything we're losing money yeah because because if we just rehearse then we're losing money you know yeah so and i and i hate to to break it down into things like that and when i started doing knife world i was mainly working a sort of you know a kind of day job sort of thing mm. and then knife i could sort of work for a, a few weeks and then have like you know some time off and book mm right let's book a week of knife world rehearsals yeah that also means other people have to fit them around to you know some of the guys in a band of teachers so I had to fit mm. it around the holiday so i try and work and then not work in those periods but obviously you know a lot of the time when you're rehearsing then they can't work you know mm. uh, if you're rehearsing so it, it's it's a it is um it does make knife world very, very difficult but on the other hand i've got some stuff for what will be the next record um so yeah, I'm very very keen to to get on board with Excellent. that again. I think that's. Yeah. I mean, it would be. I think because there is a line through all your songs and the way you write. That's you know, there's. But I think Knife World is the most most you of them all. If you know what I mean, it's got yeah, all those. Well, maybe it's, maybe, I don't maybe know. that or the solo thing. The, the, yeah, the, that or the solo thing. Really, they're, they're, the Lydian I won't say rock. they're kind of the same thing, but I think. The first Knife World record felt it, you know, was quite similar to doing this 
recent solo album because I was kind of doing everything or I was getting Mel in to sing and various guests on it. But I was, you know, completely, you know, playing most of the instruments myself. But um, by the end of it with Nifo, by the last album, Bottled Out of Eden, I only wanted to, I, I didn't even want to engineer. So I just wanted to, um, wanted to sort of, be the writer and the musical mm. director but we we the, the way we did that was i mean often what we'll do i'll do is i'll do these demos and send everyone their parts and then get them around here i'm in my little mm. studio now and record them but um with that one we all we all kind of work together in a room and what i do is i show people the parts but then they were free to sort of if they could come up with a a better version or a more elaborate or just a whatever version it was just i know all these parts work in my head mm. so here's the here's the starting point and then Let's see where we go from there. And that was really, really lovely because things that I wouldn't normally have considered, normally I'd get like the horn players in to do the horns like all separately. Mm. So, okay, well, this is the bassoon part. This is the, you know, mm. this is the part for the, you know, the the alto sax or whatever. Whereas with, with this time when I was teaching them the horn parts, they'd be working on them and then between them, because they're actually really good horn players, you know, they would say, oh, actually, you know, this part works better on the bass, this one. So they were like making my arrangements. Oh, better. that's awesome. So yeah, that was, that was, and now I don't, now I sort of don't want to go back with Knife World. But now I've, I'm kind of doing the, not the ego thing, but the, where I'm, with my solo stuff, I'm just master of every little detail mm. of sound. I quite like with the Knife World, because they're all such brilliant players. Yeah, Just amazing. doing it more where I'm just general musical director and composer, but then we, we sort of hash out our arrangement more between us, which is really nice. But then, of course, that means having to get us all in a room together, which... It's just time, isn't it? Time and money all the time, everything, isn't it? Yeah, 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 oh, and um, and you know, and you know, is that that whole thing? If if we were this bit much bigger, if, you know, if we were this much bigger, maybe we could. But I mean, it's you know, it's a big ask. It's a big ask making an eight piece band with a you know with a singer who's not for everyone, with lots of polyrhythms and a bassoon, and uh, you know, it's a big big ask asking to be that much bigger. But the live I'm, I'm grateful are... that I'm grateful that people you know like no, the live as shows as... are great. I mean, the last the last time I saw you, brilliant. So. I mean, Sometimes it's just... there. When was the last time you saw us? Um, Bush Hall. Oh God! Okay, that wasn't. One, that was all right. It I know you one. were. You know, when you, I spoke to you afterwards, and you were worried about it, but it was great. The, the vibe in the, the room. The night was before was the night in Brighton was better, but no, we did. We, um, we did a good one at the garage. Was the last time we played. I, that was, um, that was but, when uh, I wasn't well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it? I wanted to go. I mean, obviously, I would have been there, but oh uh, yeah, it was during my um, my uh, sabbatical from uh, life before going to. I was in hospital. Right now? What's that? How are you feeling now? Yeah, all right. Still having the test, but because of the COVID, you can't. Um, it's hard to get into hospitals now because I'm, I'm waiting on a, on a test. So you know, but it'd be fine. Be fine. Um, but still, yeah, it's a bit scary. But yeah, that was so. That was I missed that, and that was a gig I really wanted to go to because that was when that was um, a good one. Yeah. Yeah, Tim was down at that as well. God, I suppose that was probably the last time I saw him. That's three years life, ago. Because then of the COVID, yeah. I mean, I had a few Zooms with him. So, um, yeah, I suppose that was, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, I was. I remember reading about that. And I, I there's no way I could go because I, I was having treatment at the time. And obviously it's, uh, yeah, without b boring with the, with the uh, terrifying details, it was um, it was a period where I definitely couldn't couldn't go to gigs and stuff. But um, no, yeah, I was, I was gutted. I missed that one. And um, but so when what, it's very hard to pull. So it'll be another album, then then doing gigs again, I suppose. Will it? Well, there'll be another album. I, I must admit, I'm going to have to have. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see about gigs. But, uh, I don't want to sort. Of, not that I'm repeating myself to you, but I actually I had a, bit of a sort of thing on this on another podcast I did mm. uh, uh, last week. But I just sort of, you know, that we are at the mercy of, you know, with, with a band like Nuff, at, at the mercy of, um, with the economics of not 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 necessarily having a sound engineer. And the, and the way Knife World is written is it's all parts make up the yeah 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 you know, the sound. So the chords are made, it's not enough just to hear a kick drum, a snare, and my guitar. And a lot of time I'll do gigs where oh, we couldn't hear the horns, I couldn't hear the... And if you're not hearing the horns, you're mm. not hearing the songs. And it's just kind of... And I'm, I'm sort of getting sick of the disappointment of, of putting all that effort into rehearsal. It's such a rehearsal-intensive band, really. And, and getting... It's not just getting the parts right, it's getting the dynamics right, getting the... You know, just, just making it proper. I thought those projections I'm really of, added to I'm, it. I'm last show. heartbroken by a bad gig, which, which happens a lot, you know, so... 
the, I suppose there's two things. There's too many variables. There's, um, there's yeah. too much that could possibly go wrong. But um, I do think those projections that um, Chris, what's it, Chris Thompson did, uh, the yeah, 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 absolutely fantastic, weren't they? Really added to it. I know, no, it's brilliant. Again, all that comes down to economics, you know. With, with what, what you want is basically, I, I mean, you want someone to do the projections and a live engineer, and it's just, you've got them to be doing that. You've got to be doing 300 to uh, 700, don't you? Yeah, well, it, it's not that. It's no, it's, I mean, uh, but it's it's then the, the the other added expense is then you're paying for a you're paying for an eleven seat van because there's eight of us and one driver mm. is a nine seat van. The minute you go to an eleven seat, the, the, the it's like another hundred and fifty two hundred quid, and then you're paying for more hotel rooms for people. Mm. And uh, then, and after that, it's just like we can't afford to you know we so. But I don't know. I, it's it, it, I mean I, it's it's a very impractical band, but just I love the sound of it so much. Yes, yeah, right. there's, there's there's no going back. But um. It's a weird one because I've I seen, know. I mean, I've probably seen you lots of times. I've seen probably about 10, 15 times. And some gigs, yeah. um, if you, because it's, a, it's the, the, the horns are really important, but if you lose the guitar as well, the guitar is really key because there's still lots of stuff going on with the guitars, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to hear everything. That's and, hard. Um, yeah, well, it's it, it's not, not, with the right, not with the right sound engineer, but like I said, the economics... With that knife, I don't know. Because with Gong, the economics were much better. So yeah, well, um, and it, I was just, uh, I was so just thinking that, that gig you did in um, Norwich with that sound engineer there, and that was. Oh well, I mean, it was that was the least of our worries that night, <laughs> Norwich. Honestly, yeah, I remember that. It was uh, you know, well. at the end of the day, I think um, Knife World is a three hundred to seven hundred people a night show, isn't it? That's what it needs to be. Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And whether that- I need to start writing, I need to start writing three hundred to seven hundred people a night music, you know, for that for that to happen, you know. Uh, the, but I think uh, would it be? I, I think the economics would work out if you did like a one-off. You know, you know, at King's Place, posh venue like that. One, sorry? King's Place, King's Say Cross. Yeah. It's like that posh art when there's. I, I, uh, I think it'd work really well in a posh arty venue. Yeah, but then it's seated, isn't it? I don't like seated gigs. You don't like seats, but if you could get, I if don't you like could, it's what, what's that? Right, that yeah. holds two hundred and forty people, but you could charge like twenty five right, okay. a ticket for that because it'd be like a, an event. Yeah, it worked, worked really well as an event. Have, gig. What's that? I'll wait. I'll wait till we once we have a new record out. I'll, you know, Ooh. start thinking about it again. I mean, honestly, I just want to. I want to get to a point where we can get all eight of us in a room together. You know, Ooh. that's the that'll be the that'll be the big. Uh, that, that's the big thing. When was the last yeah, time you pl- you played with any band? Uh, Utopia Strong played um, in December the eighth. Oh, of course, yeah, I remember. Last yeah, year. we had that. What we had a gig at the Clapham Grand, which was good. It's really good, you know. Was um, it a bit weird? You could, and that's, it, a, that's a whole different buzz. Um, could you? Because you can't. Weird. No, it wasn't weird. In fact, the familiarity of it was really nice. Uh, going back in and just having the support. Well, not support, the main band, Teeth of the Sea. They're sound great. checking while we got in going to the dressing room and seeing like tubs of hummus and shitty white pita breads and like beer that you wouldn't particularly buy yourself but at least it's beer anyway in the fridge you know it was it was nice it was like ah oh, <laughs> i know <laughs> then <laughs> but yeah you know but isn't it a bit weird you couldn't sort of hug people and sort of you know um uh, with social I, distancing I, and then i hug people I, I can't i'm a hugger I, I was going to say, I can't, I can't imagine no, seeing you and not, you know, going. There was, there was, there was social distancing um, at the, uh, in the audience, but you couldn't see me. It was, it's a beautiful venue, actually, um, the Clapham Grand. I've never been there before. No, I've not. It's been. a bit like kind of, sort of Hackney Empire size, I suppose. It's, it's really? really, really nice. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Was that, so that was, that, was that seated? Yeah, yeah, it had to be, yeah. And it, they were bringing drinks to the tables. But I, I didn't see any of that because it's just, you come on stage, it's a lovely stage, really dark. So it just, it felt like doing a gig, you know. It so smelled, would that be all right like for a Knife World show, do you think? Well, it's socially distanced, maybe. I don't think, I don't doubt if we could do it uh, when gigs return. I can't wait for them. Here's the question. Do you think people are going to get, want to go back to like just being in the, squashed together? Because I, I can't. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Um Especially as, you know, it's, it's an ageing audience as well for a lot of the sort of the, the weird music, isn't it? There's a lot of older people I guess, there. I guess, I guess, maybe, yeah. Um, but, you know, I think, it, I think it also depends on the city, you know, I think. I think it's going um, to be weird I, I you, initially. 
But can you imagine? I mean, if if things do open on the twenty first of June, can you imagine the euphoria there's going to be? I mean, this might be the summer to remember. This is the first time in our lives this has happened, right? And the, you know, I I love the idea that summer of twenty one is going to be this. Oh God. Do you remember that? But do you remember the summer of twenty one, man? It's, when, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be amazing, isn't it? Like I mean, some, summer nineteen ninety. Honestly, it's going to be better than that. Whatever that was, it's going to be that on yeah, steroids. Gonna, it's gonna be like the rave summer all over I mean, again. It will. Everyone will be raving. I, I'm, I'm trying to see that. That's how I'm thinking about it. It's like God. It'll be amazing when when we get back, right? I can't wait. I hope so. I mean, what 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 have you got booked for the rest of the year, gig wise? We got gone. Um, well, there's things are things are sort of coming in. Things are coming. We've got um, a few things are getting announced. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I don't know. You know what people. else? I've got like, uh, you know, uh, uh, things are now. I mean, I got we, we had we were supposed to be touring with Gong in May, and that's mm, now been yeah. moved to it's like one month. I think it's like 26 dates. Um, with only two or two or three days off, which will be fun. Um, but yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think we've got. But um, yeah, I've got some dates coming in. I think I mean, tentatively, sort of festivals that are, are getting announced. We're just sort of waiting now to find out what, mm. um, what comes in. You know, we, we've got stuff for twenty twenty two, and um, we've yeah. got stuff. Um, I mean, we were supposed to play. We've got two big festivals in twenty twenty two, and we were supposed to do Italy. I haven't heard anything more about that at the moment. I mean, it's just work, working out how those vaccine passports and stuff are going to work, aren't it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. I'm I'm at the mercy of you know. I'm, I'm at the mercy of what whatever happens. I mean, I just I just you know, honestly I just want my. I don't know. I, I say get the old life back, but I mean it's been interesting. It's been interesting having a year or so to reflect. Hmm. So I'm not really one to um, you know, to look back or to be necess- you know, sort of nostalgic particularly but I've, it, it's been nice to kind of look back and go well this has been quite a so have you got um the new um new solo stuff coming yeah i've got um i've got four songs so far in various sort of states of completion um i should be i should be like hammering into it, but i just, I've, I've got into a real bit of a this last i'd say three or four weeks i've gotten down to a bit of a lockdown funk mm. pretty miserable um but you know, it's like I'm going to get back onto it. I mean, it's it'll be done when it's done. We're working on a new uh, album for the Utopia Strong, so we'll be able to get to work on that again soon, which right. I'm really, really excited about. Awesome. Um, there's what there's one tune on it, which is actually finished. We did that in the summer, um, and there's one tune on it which, which I don't know. It, it I won't say it's the thing I've done that I'm the happiest with. But it's wow. I don't know. On, on through through a certain lens, I feel like th- this this hits the bullseye more than anything I've ever done before. On we're through one through one sort of way of looking at it. So I'm extremely and I'm, the, the rest of it's really exciting as well. But really, very 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 looking forward to getting that finished. And so the, the method for that is you basically start off with improvisation, then you edit it down, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. I mean. No, it's interesting. So the first album was done, yeah, it was just, you know, about two and a half hours worth of improvisation. And then we, we cut those pieces down. So like, you know, the the one piece, uh, Conta Chorus, the second one, it was about a 16 minute track, which we got a three and a half. We just took the best three hmm. minutes of it. But it was quite similar. But we, was like, we listened to it a lot and thought, okay, this is the best three minutes. And then we added lots of stuff onto it. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. We just sort of go through through these sessions and, and find the best bits. But since starting out, you know, the first thing we did was that recording of the first album. And then since we, then we've, we've toured quite a bit and gigged um, and, and, and done lots more playing together. Yeah, it's really so cool. I, I think the second album sort of really come on a lot. We, you know, I think it sounds, I don't know, it's hard to say because we, we haven't finished it, but it's, it's kind of sounds less open-ended. I think it sounds, it has more of kind of, um, maybe like more intent i think cool. I mean, it's really exciting and what, what i love about doing that is that you know when, when i when i'm writing stuff i I've, I've got a certain language i use which is kind of my you know where my language and I, I seem to be able to generate enough ideas that i can mm. write stuff for various things whether it's gong or my own stuff or you know knife world or whatever but with the with the utopia strong 
because the sort of at, at, at the at the core of it, or at least at the very starting point, is the modular synth. Mm. Um, and so this thing is generating through what Steve and Mike are doing. The modular synth will be generating something, and then it's my job my job to respond to that. And w what I'll respond to it with. And this is especially true for the live gigs. The live gigs are all improvised. So, so what I'll respond to that sound with is something that's not... It's still kind of in my language, but it won't might not necessarily be what I'd come up with, if you know, apropos of nothing, if I was just sat here in the shed with the harmonium or with a guitar mm. or singing a song in my head. So me reacting to that makes me come up with different things. And because of that, when we, when we listen back to... Um, because we record every gig, you know, because you have to, because we've, we've actually released. You know, yeah, I've seen that with the lino case. That's really yeah, cool. you know, um, I mean, you listen back to it, sometimes you'll have like this like, just 10 minute section or something, which is just so transcendent. Mm. And I'd just be like, I can't, I don't even remember us doing that, you know, but there it is. There is this incredible bit of music and it's, it's such a surprise. That's and so that's cool. the, and that, what's so nice about with the, the recording, the studio albums is you get that f stage and you get used to it and think, well, how can we make this even better? Well, what if this bit didn't come into later? Oh, well, it, we can do that because look, we've got separate tracks. And mm. so it's you're, you're then sculpting, but you're, you're sculpting these ideas which were composed in real time. And I like that you're sort of the, 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 you know, the base of any piece of music is almost, it's not exactly a random, it's not exactly... Ran random but it's it's something that has sort of been generated in a very different yes. way to anything i've done before you know but that it's always been really into like these composing and like rehearsal intensive stuff and to, to come up with something as free as that mm. for, for and my, then to be for, able to sort of craft that is really really exciting from my limited really understanding of modular it seems to be more about having the taste having the you know the choosing the right um modules and, and build having the it's more about having the taste in what you're creating you know what i mean and making sure you're not just going to do something it's going to be a load of old bollocks but bringing in yeah, the right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know having the choice of choosing the right modules and making it work rather so there is a huge degree of sort of skill in it because you've got to know what you're doing oh, so yeah, it's not, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a random you, event it's a you know you just need to hear some of the stuff that isn't so exciting that's done sort of in modular synth um yeah, I've heard how much of Mike, Mike, and Steve talk a lot, kind of technical stuff, mm. and but I, I don't engage, and I like that. It's to me, it's like a form of just magic what they do, and I, I like, I like kind of not knowing, sort of what they're doing. Really, I mm. like that I'm just hearing this Reacting, incredibly yeah. beautiful sort of mm. twinkly or whatever groovy, just psychedelic noise that I'm getting to, and in 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 that moment, I'm just going well. And I like to have a funny arsenal. What do I play? You know harmonium or do i do some do i make a loop a little we're out of gliss guitar or ebo mm. or do i actually play no i sometimes i'll hear a i'll hear a melody over it and, and so it's like well and now i'll play a That's melody awesome. and, and it's, it's really really awesome really you know, i really I, I, yeah. I love to play the bass and i because i play the bass on the things when we when we're going back on it and i love just holding down a really really like dum 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 dum, dum. Dum, 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 you know, for five minutes, dum, 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 and not feeling like I have to, you know, it's just, mm. no, I'm just going to, and actually Steve writes a lot of the bass lines. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something and then Steve will go, no, 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 how about, and he'll sing something and you do it. It's like, there it is, you know, and it's usually <laughs> Steve will come up with like it. We're in, we're in three, four and he'll sing something in five, eight and I'll do, ah, oh, you know, this and is good, you know. Sort yeah, of, it'll great, great, yeah, rolls yeah. over the top. Yeah. Um, it just, yes, yeah, it must be really good fun to do those shows. That's really cool, man. Well, uh, actually, really nerve wracking. Uh, really, yeah, really yeah. nerve wracking. The, the of of in terms of the, the, the hour and a half before we play, I'm I, I I'm terrified because you just you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, and it's very rare that I come off and off stage and go, "Oh, we oh, we fucking killed it tonight." <laughs> All I can think about is we, we, you, you can't know how it sounds, and you can't know about the experience. And it's it's only the next day or the next few days later when we listen back to recordings, mm. and we go, "Wait a minute." That stuff is really. I thought we would be quite boring at this point, but this is fucking mental. I didn't hear what you were doing, or you know. So it it, it depends what you're hearing on the night. So, total but, improv. Um, it's it, like jumping out of a plane, isn't it? The total improv. I mean, I've done. Yeah, I've done yeah. I mean, a few gigs like that. And it's it's terrifying. Properly terrifying. 
but um, I enjoy it afterwards. I, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy hearing it. But no, I, I enjoy hearing it back. But I don't, mm. because you can't know. You don't have that sort of... I suppose you don't have the same feeling that you do if you're with a really well rehearsed band, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know so. the audience are going to be really into it. It's safe, you know the yeah. audience is already into what you're, you're doing, mm. and you're really rehearsed, and you know the sound's going to be good, and then you can sort of you, you can sort of really enjoy the gig, I think, and then you can actually sort of you know, especially when you if you're touring, if you're rehearsed at a point where you're not really having to think about it, mm. and, you, and you can actually start playing a bit more loosely, then it's then it's lovely. But um, it's, it's definitely a different feeling to that. So you're going to be doing some more. So the solo shows must be a completely liberating experience for you. So it's just you and a guitar and you turn up and you do your show and you go on the train or you drive. Or I love doing solo yeah, shows. It's, yeah. it's just, just well, it so nice easy. What do you do? Um, that was the thing is people I knew. It was nice seeing you do solo shows. Please. There was there was seeing you and and, and uh, seeing like Charles Hayward as well, and it was like okay, I've, because awesome. I I love it when um, you know when when, when people do a good solo show. I'd never really done it, and I started doing these things. And again, this this came back down to sort of um, just wanting to be able to do gigs at the drop of a hat. Rather yeah, than man, yeah, it's great. Isn't co it? Coordinate the you know how it's coordinate the calendar. But at first, I mean, at first, I found it really, really terrifying, and it and it took me a while to like find. There's a different sort of energy, isn't it? it? Yeah, yeah. It, actually, it was getting the harmonium. Once I got the harmonium, it kind of it. it I, I saw a way into it. I said, I said, okay, now I can make this into a. I can make this into a, like a whole show rather than a guy with a guitar. Ooh saying stuff nervously <laughs> and uh now i could the, the, the harmonium I, I can't explain the harmonium opened up something about the sound and then it allowed me to sort of like really i don't know make the gigs into more of an experience and yeah, it's interesting because well, you control the you control the energy you control ooh. how it is so there can be points at which I, I won't say anything for 15 minutes i'll just be droning away and ooh. really extending one of the tunes and other times when you get, and, I, and i like that they're really intimate but it did mm. take me a while. I don't know if you found this because I because I'd always played with a band, so I I must have got to wait till I was like forty six or something before I really kind of went out and played mm. solo. And it was it was really terrifying because you can't so they you can't be quite so big, big, can you? You have to be sort of I don't know. You have to, you know when yeah, you're playing with the, you have to be sort of Aah! but you have to be kind of yeah. giving people a so hug rather than energy. yeah yeah rather yeah. than shouting at people. You sort of yeah. It's a really weird. I mean, I think everyone should do it. But I don't think, unless you've done it, I mean, it, it's completely, it's a completely different experience. And um, it's both uh, easier and harder because you've got control. And so nothing's going to, unless you, it's, you know, something goes wrong, you've, you've still got control. But it's quite hard to, I mean, I, I did a load of those sort of warming up for prog band things. So I'd be doing like, you know, four or five hundred people and stuff. And I got, and I, you know, I did the Eastern Assembly Halls and quite big venues opening for bands. And that's a bit weird because it's not intimate. You still have to be quite, you know, trying to connect with yeah. all those people. But in the smaller ones, um, it's really cool. It's really, I re I'd love to do some more like that one day. You know what I mean? Cause, and it's just easy, isn't it? It's just, you just go out and play and you don't have to worry about it. The, uh, the thing I hate doing when we book gigs is putting the email around to ask people to do it. Hate it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And then, and it, because you, it's that you, you haven't heard back from one of the guys in the band. Yeah. Like, oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. A, well, guys, I'm really sorry. You know, I'm working, or I've got another gig that night. And yeah, it's a horrible you know, feeling, isn't it? It's just, it's just. Yeah. So it's, I can only imagine what it's like with Knife World trying to sort of do, but you know, that's the nature. They're all, I mean, the other thing is they're all they're all really busy uh, outside of you know the band. You know, I mean, Ben's well before this, this craziness ben was pretty full-time you know josh is pretty full-time mm. sorry charlie's pretty full-time with music emmett's you know always doing stuff so yeah it is it is um it, it is hard but you know i kind of i'm kind of ready to do some more of that now yeah no definitely definitely um just want to ask a few bits about guitar stuff i mean so, guitars i never talk i never talk guitars let's i like talk about I've guitars got, you know. so you've got that um jazz master at the minute is that right do you want to see it yeah. <laughs> hey, this. this has become my. That's uh, a cool guitar. This is well. This is there's a story to it. This this is now my um main guitar, and I tell you what, it's changed. It's completely changed my playing. Well, not yeah. completely. 
it's it's radically changed my playing. I'll tell you the story of it. So this guitar belonged belonged to um, a friend. Look at the headstock, man. This <sighs> guitar belonged to a friend of mine called Nick Marsh, um, who played in the band uh, Flesh for Lulu. Mm. And this this was his spare. And what it is, it's a Squire uh, J Maskis. Mm. Uh, jazz master. This was his spare. He used to call it Junior. His main guitar was this beautiful sort of turquoise um, Jaguar, which he called Hank. Mm. And uh, this was kind of like creamy, creamy coloured, cream and gold. Like the, the scratch plate was gold. Um, and uh, you know, he he died a few years ago. Sorry, and his partner, who's you know a very good friend of mine, Catherine, mm. Catherine Blake, mentioned that well, she might um. She, she, you know, she maybe would get rid of this guitar, sell, sell this guitar. And I, I would love to have had something of Nick's, you know, particularly mm. a guitar. But then it get, and and uh, it came to it, and then she and the when I wanted to buy it, she said, oh, "Actually, no, I'm I'm thinking of keeping hold of it." Mm. Well, my wife, uh, my door, my wife had been on at me to get a, a solid body. I, I hadn't had a solid body since I was in a metal band. Mm. In uh, you know, I'd always had like I had this before. I had um like this West Tone Semi, and then I got my Gretsch, the White mm -hmm. Falcon. But the annoying thing about the Gretsch, not from my perspective, but certainly from hers, it's so loud. It's almost as loud as an acoustic guitar. So when I'm just noodling, which is most of the time, you know, when I'm not kind of writing tunes, and all my stuff sounds the same anyways, it must drive her nuts. So it was just quite annoying in the house, and she was just like, look, can you just get a fucking solid body guitar to play <laughs> at home? But anyways, I was going to get this, but... um. Catherine decided not to say. So I got um, I saw on eBay, and I always wanted one of these. Um, I've got it here as well. Let's really go guitar. I saw on eBay for three hundred quid, and Ibanez. I love that guitar. That's I the Adrian are, Smith one. Like Adrian Smith, although yeah, yeah, yeah. Or um, well, so I thought. Um, but he, he had Ooh. an all red one. But I, I, I always thought he was playing an Ibanez Destroyer on the back of Killers. I don't yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. an Ibanez. I think it's, it's not. It's something else. But it's not actually an Ibanez. But, uh, it looks like this anyway. Mm. But I always wanted one I, because, mm. you know, because of Adrian Smith, of course. And um, I found one on eBay for 300 quid, pick up only. And I thought, oh, it's got to go for more than that. It's got to go for more than that. And because it was pick up only, I got it for 300. Cool. Couldn't believe it. And I went down there and the guy had never even, he's almost never used it. It still had like sort of a bit of protective wrapper over the headstock. So it was as new, really. And I, I, yeah, I, I just Such loved it. Guitar. You know, it's so exciting to have a, to yeah. finally have a sort of d d destroyer. But then when Catherine said she was gonna she was gonna um get rid of that guitar, I bought it off her. But the thing is by this time it was really shagged. It was kind of mm. the, the electrics weren't working, it had some gouges in it, and I thought, well I can't I can't oops, I can't keep up with that. Oops, You're right. that. Yeah, there goes the right symbol. Sorry, Mel. Oops. Um I can't keep it as um a museum piece. And then Dawn said, Dawn, you know, my wife said, Look, I'll I'll do it up. And so, and I, I got. It's lovely. Run. It's a really lovely guitar. Yeah, so she did this. She did the scratch plate and also the headstock. But have I you got, got the mastery bridge, bridge on it? Mastery bridge and a mastery yeah. trem as well. Mm. And uh, I remember saying to my, yeah, extraordinary guitar player James Sedwards. Mm, I remember seeing awesome. him and saying, "Oh, I've got this. I've got this jazz master thing. Like it's, it's you know, it's it's up and running." And he said, "Oh, that guitar will be the making of you." Mm. And um, and I also said, oh, I've got a trem, but I'm not really a trem. I'm not really a trem user. And he said, Oh, you wait, you will be. And I tell you what, I found my lead guitarist. I've I found my inner Jimi Hendrix. Oh, does it uh, having, having this guitar, I've got really, really into. I don't know if it's like the scale of the neck mm. um, or what, but it's just really, really easy to play. And, they feel uh, really different, don't they? They feel really it's different. It's made for playing there. solos. It's you know, it's it's just kind of made for playing solos on. So that's that's what I do, and I think I've. Does it stay in tune? Really, oh God, totally! It really, really stays in tune. I mean, much more than the great, more than any guitar I've had. It sounded um, fantastic at the at the um, at that gig you did at the the gong one at the um, last year, two years ago. I lost a that, year. Was that the assembly hall or was that the um, assembly hall? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's and it's like, well, I mean, it, it's it's not that I'm just not that I'm putting the Gretsch uh, to rest. I still use. I still I recorded with it the other day, but I think I may I may when gigs become a thing again, maybe I'll retire the Gretsch. Just keep it at home. I've, it's been all over. You know, taking it's been to like Japan, China, US, uh, all around Europe. Um, it's you, you know America. 
Okay, so I've, I've really, really um, the Gretsch has been all over the world and still in one piece. So maybe Ooh, nice. this might be my new phase. This I, I don't want to play any other guitar than this jazz master. I'm totally into it. What what um pedals so are you using? What what pedals are you using at the minute, Carvers? Um, I've got well, actually, this is mainly for Gong and the Utopia Strong. With with Knife World, I mean, really, all I need is a volume pedal and um, an overdrive. Mm. Oh, I do a little loop at one point, but I, I use almost no effects for Knife World. But um, mm. I use pedals. Um, I have a like a funny. I have a vol at the front. I have a volume pedal. I've always I always used to use the Ernie Vaughan. I've got one up there, but I, I I've had to go for this. I don't know if you're a volume pedal man. The Ernie balls are really really nice. It's a nice one, but I've been through three of them, and they they're just it's a hot, it's a great design in terms of the way it works. But the they break. It's got a it's got a string inside it which keeps it snaps after a two after a few years of heavy use. It snaps, and it's a, such a ball ache to try and you mm. can't do it. So I've been through three of them. So I've finally mm -hmm. gone for this big heavy boss thing. Which I'm, I'm not nearly as happy about the action of it. I've got one of those, yeah. The SC one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it, you know, it, 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 it kind of works. I, mm. I wish they'd invent, you know, I mean, if I can get, a, if, I, if I get an early ball sponsorship, they can give me a load of these VP, VP. Stick me the cowboy but, books, yeah. So I've got, I've got that. Um, I've currently, I'm, I'm, I've got to get a new, I'll get a new overdrive when, um, when we get back to doing gigging. I had to buy the last. I was in a gong tour and my overdrive died in the middle of a tour. So I had to just go and try out whatever was best in the shop. And I ended up with this like sort of Ibanez tube screamer, which isn't ideal, but again, so I'll, I'll, do you I'll take worry about that. When you're touring, do you take spares and stuff? No. <laughs> you're braver than me. I've got spares of everything. Really? Do you take spare pedals? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I shouldn't be able to do the gig without the pedals, yeah. So... No, I mean, in terms of fancy, I use, I use a tremolo a lot. Oh, I've got really cheap tremors. It's like a Behringer, but I love it because it's got that real. I remember, yeah, the voice. I, want, one, yeah. I, want, I just want the square wave. Yeah, yeah. I want yeah. it to have that. Uh, uh, I don't want uh, the yeah. kind of posh amp. Wah, 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 wah. You know, it's very yeah. nice, but I just want it to have that complete mechanical square mm. wave thing, um, which it does, which is great. I've got. Um, You've had that I've ages, haven't you, the Behringer? You yeah, had that, yeah, you had that about does one thing. 10 years ago when I first yeah, met yeah, you. All I want it to do is that one thing. It still does it, still on the pedal wall. Well, given this old, uh, funny old flanger, I don't know who it's made by, but apparently they're quite rare now, but that's quite a fun one. So I got, mm. got into using a flanger. I have this, um, I have this hilarious pedal, uh, Electro Harmonics Ravish Sitar. Oh, you can't have those. You know, this, it's really, really good fun, but I, 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 I use it as a particular, a particular gong track where I use that through a tremolo for about the first six or seven minutes of the song it's just like dwarf, 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 dwarf. and it just sounds like a synth it's just like, like, like a sequencer mm. and it's just the most amazing awesome. sounds so i use the trem you, you wouldn't know it's a sitar but just mm. use the sitar which has this lovely kind of drone thing what, what do you call it it's kind of the sound mod sort of it's, yeah especially like a, going like a modulated drone thing and you can like when, when you're doing different chords up the neck you can just be like it's really really lovely noise so i use that but i don't I, I rarely use it on the sitar setting but i use it for recording quite a lot but then I, and then the, the other big thing is a looper um so i've been using for years uh it was when i joined guapo is oh you're going to need a looper i i, I borrowed an akai head rush which i still use live i've only got about like 20 seconds of looping on mm. it, but, it's great because it's got the delay on it as well. Um, but I just bought a new looper um, recently. It's that. Um, where is it? I've been I've been using it though for um, well mainly recording recently. Uh, it's the Ditto. Oh, I do you know this one? The yeah. Ditto looper. Oh, it's brilliant because why? Well, I tell you what, it's brilliant. It's got um, if it's got a thing where you can make the loop go half time, hmm. and you can make the loop loop go backwards. Yeah, that's and I've cool, got yeah. really into. Oh, I tell you what, I bought recently. This is a bit of porn. Have you seen this this character? Oh, I've I've got i uh, well, I've got it on the. Uh, <laughs> I've only used one, I've got one of those, so it's got all the sounds from it in there. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> both have our own time. But I tell you what, is this this um? I've I've got this. I've got um. It's good that it's this my fantastic. My Santor, which is like a sort of Persian dulcimer. Yeah, yeah. Been making these loops of the Santor, putting them into. Putting them into like half times, it just gets really dong. Yeah. And then there's a, there's a setting on the even tide space called Nebula. Yeah. Dialing it in, and you, you you can just create just the most. It's amazing. 
incredibly psychedelic bed and mm. also just like having just, just the backwards just the instant psychedelic of reverse i love the mm. stuff sound yeah, stuff backwards. Too, yeah. so to be able to have a pedal that can make you have backwards stuff for live is, is really really exciting so i've been using that but more for more for like santor and, and stuff rather than guitar they uh, said the yeah, that's, um, my, that's, my, that's my setup it's fairly you know the space, the I mean, space seen... reverb's great. I mean, the, the, there's that black hole reverb on there as well, which is like the yeah, yeah, it's right, really that. good. Yeah, I mean, it's just I think we're living in, the, in a glorious time for weird pedal sounds and funny noise. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think I find the more I get into, the less guitar I play because I'm just doing sound design and just making funny noises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, you know, well, I love all that. In the Utopia Strong, I do I do that a lot because I'm trying to make something that, um, you know, something that something that's gonna. I mean, I, what, what I really what I really like about the Utopia Strong and what I love about the music we've made is that I, I think it's the it's the kind of least sort of egotistical uh, mm. thing I've ever done, uh, which isn't to say that necessarily um, it's otherwise about the ego, but it's kind of it is just trying to create sort of something really transcendental that is going to make you just you're transformative and we're all into you know we are we all like the idea of things like these overlapping orbits mm. that don't quite meet up and so and um so that there's that, i mean there's sometimes i'll i'll take a sort of i don't know what i'll do I may, someone will come to the fore and then people will back off and let them do it. But it's quite, it, it, it's really, really, you know, just trying to compose something together. And a lot of the time when we're listening back to the recordings, we can't tell who's doing what with the Utopia Strong. Oh, it's a really exciting really cool. thing, you know. Because there's with um, improvisation, it's like, um, there's conversational sort of spontaneous composition as a unit, which I love. And then there's, you know, people widdly 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 you know i wish i've got no interest in whatsoever you know what i mean it's just you know i, I mean you know if the widdly widdly is good i mean i'm into it well, you know, but uh, I, I find uh, i find it increasingly hard to get excited over new widdly widdly because i've kind okay, of heard I, it. I, I, mean, I don't i don't keep up with the world world of widdly you know i mean I sort of <laughs> i don't know what's going on in the widdly world it, it's, um, it's the same as what's been going on for the last 25 basically since it's um i mean it's, it's just it's the same but slightly faster I mean, since the days okay. of Vinnie Moore and, um, you know, the real greats. Uh, yeah. What was that Vinnie Moore yeah, album? Well, I tell you one thing about Vinnie Moore. The, the Mind's Eye was my album. Mind's Eye was my album. I've got Mind's Eye, man. I used to come home from school when I was about... Uh, I suppose, the shrapnel years. Yeah, about when I was about 14. I used, it's like Iron Maiden on steroids or something. Like <laughs> Um, God, that's the same time I've used it on steroids analogy. I've never taken steroids, so I can't even... It's just a cliche. I shouldn't have said that. It's like Iron Maiden on... I don't know what. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I used to love Mind's Eye. Yeah, the me. thing is, I must admit, I have to say, that is my... Because, you know, music when you're drunk sounds rubbish, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there are plenty of drugs which make music sound fucking amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Or make good music sound better. Yeah. <laughs> Alcohol isn't one of them, you know, but that Mind's Eye is still my go-to drunk album. When I'm drunk, if I would come back, if I walk back really pissed up from a friend, I'll find it on YouTube and just like hold my phone to my ear as I'm walking along, the whole album. And the next morning, it's like, oh, I fucking listen to Mind's Eye all the way home. I still, I still really, really like, I could do without the drum solo still. I never liked it at the time, and I, but it's, yeah, I yeah. Love it, you know. It's, I remember just being very, very, very harmonic minor all the way through and sweet picking and. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it's really, really fun. You know, I could, uh, I could never play like. Well, I, I mean, it's a, don't I, get me wrong, he's a brilliant a guitarist, he's a phenomenal guitarist. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, that's as far I had to go. I bought the one afterwards, but I, di I didn't like the the way it was recorded and stuff. But Mind's Eye was just my hit, and that was my Guitar Hero album. I don't really, I didn't really, um, I mean, you know, like everyone, I liked, I like flexible Steve Vai. Mm, that's great. You know, yeah. That's very remember, musical, isn't it? Flexible. That's the. Well, I think um, I like Steve Vai's tunes in in, in a way. I, I mean, I, I really, I, I liked a lot of uh, Passion and Warfare, but I just. Too, yeah. I kind of wish it wasn't all on guitar. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, it's got that kind of thick, but, actually even tidy, 
processed guitar sound. And it's like, what this would sound like if you made those parts be played on horns, if you had these parts on, you know, you, because the, the writing was really good and the arrangements are really exciting. You know, lots of funny stuff going on in the arrangement. And he always, he's sort of mm. lush. Well, I, no, I mean, melody. but funny, just thinking about it, um, a lot of your stuff's very, he's got a very similar feel to um, the early Steve Vai's. It's that Lydian major, <laughs> Lydian <laughs> rock thing. But you know that Lydian, because I always say the Lydian in your stuff. Oh, yes, I, I'm, a, I'm a C for it, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's lots of that. I wouldn't say it was, it was, you don't hear that much Lydian rock. And, you know, Steve Vai's um, early stuff has got, he's all very Lydian, isn't it? Well, it, here's the thing um, I, I, th I thought about, which I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to, um, although not very hard, do, do, do that you know what kind of music or i play blues you know i play blues rock i said well i play lydian rock you know that's, that's the only difference is i i just you use that scare that that mode and i use this mode but it's still like rock in the same way that like you know regardless of whether you're doing something that's you know at, at one end like you know all the, the different end there'll be something like peaches for instance if you remember a few years back peaches, yeah, yeah, total blues peaches, kind yeah. of electro blues you know is that, that that scale so why not? So I, I know nobody knows what I talk about, what I'm talking about, but I just said, well, it's, it's Lydian rock. That's what, I, that's what life world is anyway. Makes sense to me. Maybe my, uh, I, 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 I'm just, I Makes don't know sense. that, that, that I, I, I think I should give, I mean, it's not all, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm terrible for the Lydian. I, I sometimes think I should give myself a challenge to make a record where I don't use at any point. <laughs> well, and the funny thing is, so if I start in a way, I, mean, I love it. If I start messing about with like Lydian drone stuff, I thought that just sounds too much like yeah. Carvus. I can't go there. I know. Yeah, I've, I've really like. That <laughs> <laughs> is. I've spoiled. I spoiled the Lydian mode for everyone. So no, I see. You know, I was like, I, I was, love it. I love it. It just chokes me up. You know, it, it, it's just whatever it is. It's lovely. I, yeah. I think it's maybe it's the it's the um it's the mode of the spirit world. Maybe that's mm. what it is. It, it really gets to me. You know. No, this um, it's it's it definitely got that um. Remind is always got that. If you, if you do something with a drone and a Lydian, it always reminds me of um, you know the um, the the stuff you did and you know that sort of stuff. But so um, I mean, you, do any, uh, you do any Guapo stuff? Is that is that on the agenda? Yes, but it's not called Guapo anymore. Oh, okay. I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we have an album coming out in May. On I think I think I can go public about this. I haven't. I don't, you don't I, want to get um, in trouble. No, I don't think I get in trouble. I think I'll just get the. I'll get the get the rumor. Well, yeah, rumor mill. Yeah, you know, the the, the, the triumphant return of Guapa. Um, we've uh, we have a new album coming out in May under the name The Holy Family. Oh, that's cool. Uh, which is very different. And the reason that we're we're called The Holy Family now and not Guapo is, it's it's the last lineup of Guapo. So it's um obviously Dave Smith, Emmett um elvin sam warren on bass and mike york on pipes um and me and me well on this record playing a harmonium guitar uh acoustic guitar um and it, yeah it's significant it's significantly different enough from what guapo was doing to warrant having a new name wow and there was some discussion about whether we should call it guapo or not and i know dave was very keen to change the name Mm. And uh, and I and I and I think he's right because I I think it, in many ways, sort of Guapo had a if not a peak there was there was a time in the mid two thousands where I think you know there's a period that Guapo was we we seemed to be you know gigging a lot and it was a mm. really really brilliant lineup and I and I really love what we did the last two studio albums we just never Ooh. really got to tour it very much we only did these like occasional gigs. And it kind of, it's not that Guapo had run its course, but I think it's radically different enough for, and I know Dave was keen to have a new start. So, and I think the other thing is, is it, it otherwise it might, some people might, some Guapo fans might not like it, you know. So what, what's this stuff to, like? To then? my mind. It, what's the, what's oh, the difference? Uh, I, I sort of don't want to give too much away. That's, that's, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it, I, I think it's beautiful. I think it's really beautiful. It's oh, it's very psychedelic. It um it's much less sort of um. There's one track that probably has the stink of old Guapo in it, but it's it's much more sort of. 
how can I say? Oh, you're here. You're here. It's, <laughs> okay. a, it's a different vibe. It's really exciting, though. I think it's a really, it's a, it's a really lovely, cohesive uh, album. It's a real trip. It goes. It's going to be a double album, you know. Which uh, maybe, well, I wouldn't say commercial suicide, but you know, coming out first album double. <laughs> but there it is, and that's cool, the Holy man. Family, and they'll be coming out on Rocket Recordings in May. Brilliant. So I, I'm really, really excited because almost, almost no one has heard it yet. They're just like us and a, a few of our friends, mm. and we've had really good feedback. But we're sort of keeping it kind of like okay, this. Uh, you know the big reveal, and we won't be able to do any. We can't because we can't rehearse, so we won't be able to do any gigs to launch it at this point. But th there will be, there will be gigs. So, was that and recorded? It's, it's very much. Was that pre-lockdown? You recorded that? No, not at all. No. Is that a pre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started it two years ago. Wow. We started it two years ago. We spent uh, two or three days making all this stuff, like improvised, really, um, and then Dave spent two years chopping it up compiling it joining mm. bits doing it they just took all this raw data and created this thing out of it and then he got us round to his house um i suppose that must have been like the summer was it the summer it was when we were allowed to God, so allowed but um went round to his house to hear this thing and it was a strange sensation because i'd been i hadn't heard it since we made it but obviously i can i could recognize it as being us so here, and I never saw, that's obviously me playing the guitar, and I recognised that it, you know, it, it sort of it had moved to somewhere com completely different. What Dave has taken out of this raw material and turned to someone else, and then once we got to that point, then he said, "Okay, I think you need to come and do some guitar overdubs here. I think you could track, yeah, you could double cool. track your acoustic guitar. We're gonna." So then we did some finishing. It was kind of it was sort of out on my hands, but what I really like about doing Guapo as a because every, every band I do is is a different way of mm, working, a different, different way, yeah. operation. And what I liked about doing Guapa is, although towards the end Emmett and I would be writing a lot of the sort of harmonic and melodic yeah. stuff and the riffs, the buck always stops with Dave. So it's always Dave's Dave's like the overseer, and and he's kind of, you know he approaches he's a sculptor, so he approaches it like an artist. So it always has to get through the filter of Dave. So it all, it ends up sounding like Guapo, whatever we do. And because his drumming is so kind of, mm. um, it's the word idio, idiosyncratic, just so mm. uniquely Dave, that whatever he plays on, it just sort of sounds like Guapo. You know, he's completely got this sort of unique style. Cool. So it's quite nice to generate this stuff. And sometimes, sometimes I'll come up with a, or I used to come up with a bit, and he'd go, "Yeah, save, save that for Knife World." You know, it's a, maybe it was a bit too major or a bit too <laughs> Lydian or whatever. But it's it's like, he likes a lot of, you know, I got to really do all the dissonant kind of stuff, which I love doing. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's big on that. So any, if I have these, if I come up with a dissonant riff, it's like, well, that's a that's a guapo one there. You mm. know, 